Hi, my name is Meng and welcome back to the Figma course for creating a design system. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, I just want to point out that this section is a little bit lean towards beginners. So feel free to skip some steps or to make the video faster. That being said, make sure to download all the assets for Figma assets that are provided. So let's get started. We're going to build this little layout here so that we can learn some of the basic techniques and kind of get used to how Figma works. So the first thing is to create a new document and this is what you have and here you can press A or F. So A is kind of like the same as artboard for sketch but you can also press F and you can pick one of the templates uh, such as the, for the phone, for the tablet, for desktop. So in this case I'm going to choose the MacBook Pro. Now why do I choose the MacBook Pro as a template for creating a website? Well, the reason why is because, first of all, the MacBook Pro is a 13-inch screen and it's a, a very popular resolution, but at the same time, it gives me a lot of space to work with. And that is really important for creativity, for giving a lot of negative spacing whenever you create your elements so that it breathes a lot and that really helps for your design. Now, let's talk about grids. Uh, grids is really important because it allows you to space and align elements against each other in a consistent way where it's good for aesthetics and legibility. When we talk about mobile design, we usually use the 8-point grid. But when we talk about web design, we usually use the 960 grid. But in this case, I would say that it's not super important um, in how you divide your grid. But what is more important is how you place um, your element inside a grid. So in order to create one, you have to go here, which is the layout grid. And you're going to click on a plus sign. And you're going to have by default the grid 10, which is perfect for me because I like to round my numbers in increments of 10 as much as possible so that it's cleaner and it's more consistent. Most layouts start with a cover image. So I'm gonna do a rectangle. I'm gonna press R to create a rectangle. And as you can see, when I'm moving, it's really trying to, to follow the grid. And that's really nice and useful. So one thing you can do in Figma, just like in Sketch, is you can use a math in the field. So for example, I can say, 200% and that would be 200% of the initial value versus in sketch it would be 100% uh, for example of the artboard uh, but just like in sketch you can divide by 2 you can also mouse over the first letter and you can do scrubbing which is really nice as well as you can see here uh, obviously I'm just gonna place it so that it takes the full width and the full height as well and as you can see, I'm using smart guides to help me. Another important thing to know in Figma is how you select elements. Uh, for example, here I can select this, but I'm selecting the frame and not the actual rectangle. So you can actually use a command click to go directly to the element that you mouse over and that you want to select, regardless of how much nesting and how many groups that you have. Let's turn off the grid for now. Uh, but what you're noticing is that if I resize my rectangle, it still kind of do these uh, really nice increments of 10 that I'm looking for. So that's why we have set up the grid. So let's change the background color here. I'm gonna click on the fill. And here I have the normal color picker that I can change to any color that I want. I can also see that I have a bunch of colors that are presets, which are my document colors. These colors are automatically detected based on what you're using here in your Figma file. But otherwise, when you're gonna have library, it's gonna be here. When you're gonna have styles, it's gonna be present here as well. Uh, you can also move to linear, so you can have a gradient, or even radial, angular, diamond but let's change the image we're going to choose the image and we're going to select uh, the assets that were provided and we're going to select the one called background 
one. What is kind of cool here is that you can change the fit, the crop, and make it tile. But you can also change the exposure of the image right from the fill property. Okay, so let's close this and create a text layer. I'm going to press T and I'm going to write learn to design and code modern apps. Here, I'm going to set it to 60. I'm going to set the color to white. Now, make sure that you have the desktop app so that you can have access to also your system fonts, your local fonts. So I'm going to set SF um, Pro Display and I'm going to make it bold. This text layer can also have a fixed width. So I'm going to make it 500 pixel width and I'm going to set it to center. The other thing I can do is to align it within this box to be in the center. So I can click here using one of the align tools. I'm gonna go align horizontal centers, which does exactly that, and vertical as well. Since I don't really like the way that the text is showing, I'm gonna use a new line from here. And this is much better. So learn to design and code and then modern apps. The other thing I can do is to just change the color for this one. So I can click fill and I can use an, the eyedropper tool and let's say I want to use like a very light blue like this maybe make it a little bit lighter to have better contrast even cooler I can make a gradient on this text so for example I can switch to linear and have a little bit of transparency maybe not this much I can switch like this and maybe this one is gonna have just a little bit of transparency so that's kind of cool I can even change the color a little bit and voila it's important to keep in mind that this can be done quite easily using CSS so having the design tool allow you to do this kind of technique is important so that you can be consistent when you're going to be implementing it in code. Okay, so let's duplicate this. I'm going to press escape and I'm going to use option drag to duplicate this. I'm going to copy and paste the text. So this can be any text by the way and I'm going to set it to 30 point. I'm going to set it to regular with a line height of 130 so it breathes more I'm not gonna have a linear gradient this time so I'm just gonna go back to solid and white but with a transparency of 80% now I want to have a distance of 40 pixel from these two elements so I can use the option key to check the distances so now I can see that it's 23 so I'm gonna set it to 40 using the option key now I'm going to group these two elements together so I'm gonna to select using shift and I'm gonna do command G to group together always uh, name your layers as much as possible so I'm gonna name these group text and again I'm gonna center it vertically now let's create a circle I'm gonna press O set it to 120 and by the way you can use shift so you can hold shift to make sure that it keeps the aspect ratio so I'm gonna set it to 120 by 120 again center I'm gonna use control C to eyedrop so I'm gonna set to the dark blue right here and set it to a 50% opacity like this now I can use background blur so this is what the effects are for. I'm going to click plus, change it to background blur, which is kind of neat. I can set it to 40. And there you go. Let's create a play button. We're going to go here to insert 
a polygon and using shift I'm gonna create something 70 by 70 and by the way I can change as many polygon counts that I want but here I'm just gonna use three I'm going to change the corner radius to 5 and then I'm going to change the rotation to minus 9 degrees so now I have a neat play button and obviously I can customize the size so I'm gonna set it to maybe 80 by 60 or 70 okay so let's group these two layers together so command click and command click shift and then command G name the group play button another thing that we should do is to make the text a little bit more readable so I'm gonna command click this I'm gonna go to effects plus and here I'm gonna set the blur to usually twice as much as the Y position the X position should not be changed so for example I'm gonna set it to 20 and then 10 that looks pretty good so now let's work on the menu as you can see here we're gonna create this menu and one thing I want to show you is how to import a sketch document um, so I'm gonna go to Figma and here if I go to file I can do new from sketch file I can also drag and drop of course but I'm gonna do this and design code logo so this is going to create a new Figma file using exactly the same layers that I have created in Sketch. And as you can see, everything is in vector and it's absolutely wonderful. So now I can just copy and paste this logo that I want. So I'm going to copy it, go back to my document and I'm going to paste it right here. And this is a vector. I'm going to resize this to 30, so using Shift. Voila. I'm also going to add a bunch of text buttons. So T and then courses. I'm gonna set this to be white, set it to 20 and bold. Let's make it a distance of 50 from the logo. Also, make sure that it's aligned to the left, like this. And from here, I can just duplicate this. So, option, drag. Again, at 50. And I'm going to do that multiple times. So, command D, again. So, as you can see, by doing so, I was able to duplicate multiple times by keeping the same distances. So, now I'm just going to change the text to downloads. And then to pricing and sign in let's make sure that we have a consistent space so 50 between each element and then I'm going to create a button that is 150 by 40 like this with a corner radius of 10 and I'm going to change the color so I can go to this document for example copy and paste here color code then create a text try for free set it to black and you can just center it using the smart guide of course I can group the two of them together so try button and then I'm going to group all the text as well as a logo and name it Heather from here I can just align the whole thing in the center and about 50 from the top like so but you can see that the spacing here is not consistent it's about 64 uh, you can always double click to go inside a folder and then another subfolder and so on so double click you know option to get the distance get to 50 and we're good select the whole thing and align it again let's also fix the logo so it's a little bit more centered Cool, so let's create another button right underneath here. So I'm gonna create a rectangle that is 220 by 40. And here I'm gonna create a pill shape button 
using the corner radius of 20. So the corner radius should be half of the height. So that gives the fill shape a button. I'm gonna create a fill of black, but at 80% opacity. And a stroke of one, make it white at 25% opacity. And then let's move it to 40 from the text. Let's create a text using T. Watch the video. Let's make it white at 80% opacity. Center it. Make it centered. And let's make it semi bold as well as we're going to go to the advanced type. And here you can change, you know, how it's going to auto resize or the transform. In this case, I want to make it all uppercase so it looks like this. Let's also change the font size to 18 like this. Let's align it and voila. Group it together, command G, name it watch button. Let's create a rectangle of 50 by 50. This is for the logo and I'm gonna change it to image Choosing one of the logos, such as Sketch, for example, and I'm gonna set it to fit so that it fits all the time in this box. Now I can just option drag this with the 40 distance and I can do Command D multiple times. I'm gonna do so until I have eight logos like this. Now I can just change the image for each. Okay, so with all the logos done, I can just select all of them to group and name it as logos. And then I'm going to center it with a distance of 40 from the bottom, like this. Cool, so this is what we have so far. And we just need to start organizing our layers so that they make sense and they're as accurate as possible to the actual implementation in HTML. CSS and react so for example the header is going to be at the root level and th this is fine now the logos as well as the watch button the play button the text and the background should be part of a component part of a section a module that is also at the root level so all of this is going to be grouped and named as hero Make sure that the header is above. And finally, we're going to rename rectangle to background. So this is how we're going to implement it. We have the header, and then we'll have the hero. And then the logos are going to be part of hero. So this is going to be positioned against the hero, as well as the watch button, the play button, the text, um, and the background. Awesome. So we've learned quite a few things here. We've learned how to set up our grid. We've learned how to create a very basic layout using text layers, rectangle, background blur, and even how to use a polygon using corner radius. We've learned how to set up the alignments, how to organize our layers, and how to use images as well as some really cool effects I'm going to share the source file for this design so that you can find exactly the same colors, the assets, etc. And by the way, you can go to file, save as a Figma file so that you can easily share it and it's going to be frozen in time. In the next section, we're going to learn how to make all of this stuff adaptive using constraints and we're going to rebuild the same design for the iPhone 10 and the iPhone SE. Again, thank you so much for following along and I'll see you in the next section.